Hey everybody, Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com here. We've got an Illustrator tutorial today and we're gonna be creating something that looks a little bit like this. And it's a bit of a, a simple line drawing tutorial, but it just looks so cool. I couldn't resist to do it and to make it and to make this thing happen. If you guys enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel using that little red button down there below. And if you really enjoy what you see, well, the best way to support the channel is to pick up a copy of my Photoshop course. A link should appear somewhere in the top corner. Uh, it's a, a Photoshop course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. There's a link down in the bio for that as well. Let's jump in and check out this tutorial right now. So here we are, as we saw, this is the finished effect, or it's gonna look something like this. Now, to kick things off, what we wanna do is go File New, and we're gonna just create this completely from scratch. I'm gonna roll with a document that's 2560 by 1440 in the pixel department, and an RGB color mode is gonna work just fine for us. Hit Create. Here's our new document. Now, over here in the Layers panel, to make things a little bit easier for you guys to see, I'm gonna pop my Flyout menu open and go to my Panel Options and just choose to, I don't know, give myself 75 pixel thumbnails or something ludicrous and huge and all that. And I'm going to grab my Rectangle tool over here. I'm just gonna click a single time and I'm gonna make a rectangle that is the size of my document, 2560 by 1440, as you see. Hit OK, there we go, we've placed this. All right, now over here on my tool panel, I'm gonna select the stroke, and I'm just gonna click on this little None option to get rid of that little black stroke. And then I'm gonna double click on the Fill color, double click, and I'm gonna fill this with the color 00D96D. It's kind of like this, you know, bright green color. This is gonna be our background. And all I need to do now is grab my Selection tool up here, and Swing over here to my Align panel. Now, I have my Align panel out here. Yours may still be Window Align, right? Point is, just open up that Align panel there and just align this guy to the vertical and horizontal centers. And when you click, if nothing happens, don't worry, just double click on the Align tab until you get sort of the expanded Align panel. And we're looking here for this Align to option, I should say, here in the Align panel. And we want to change it from Align to Selection to align it to the artboard. And then we'll align vertical and horizontal centers. Great. And I'm even going to name this layer here by double clicking on it. I'm going to name it Background. And to keep ourselves from messing it up, I'm going to click here between the eyeball and the blue bar. I'm gonna lock that layer up and create a new layer. And this layer we'll call Artwork or something like that. So let's begin creating a series of shapes. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and I'm gonna click a single time. And I am going to set this rectangle, I want it to be 550 pixels wide by 150 pixels tall. I'm gonna hit okay and you're gonna see, you're not really gonna see anything but the transform box because the fill color of this rectangle is the same as the background. Uh, we're actually gonna swap the fill and the stroke by hitting that little swappy swap arrow. I'm gonna select the, the stroke here, I can double click on it. And we're gonna set our stroke color to 26, 26, 26, which is just a very, very dark gray, hit okay. and. And uh, I can collapse my align panel here because the important panel that we're going to be focused a bit on is the stroke panel here. Double click to open that bad boy up. We're going to set the weight of this stroke to 25 points. And I want to make sure that my corners are very sharp. And I, pr I probably either want to roll with aligning the stroke to the inside or the outside. I think I'm going to align the stroke to the outside here. Um, and just to remember that that's what I'm going through this tutorial. So I'm aligning the stroke to the outside of the path. And before we create any more shapes, for the sake of helping with alignment and things like that, you want to make sure up under here, under the view menu, you turn on smart guides. It's really going to be helpful. So I've got smart guides turned on. All right, let's create some more shapes. So with the rectangle tool, um, I'm going to create another rectangle. This one's going to be 200 pixels wide by 40 pixels tall. I'm going to say OK. And you can see it's giving me that 25 pixel stroke on the outside of the path. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over. And you can see I can sort of automatically align it to the center of my my larger you know, body rectangle, if you will. So I line that up just like that, and I'm gonna duplicate this shape, so I'm gonna go Edit Copy, and then I'm just gonna choose Edit Paste in front, and it's gonna paste it exactly in place, and then I'm gonna drag this shape right over, I'll probably drag it over pretty far, maybe something like that, because this will sort of be the plunger on the back of the needle, so if you can imagine, the needle point will come out over here. In fact, I'm gonna just select this and nudge it back a little bit more, maybe something more like that, that looks pretty cool. Now we'll create a, an ellipse, so click and hold on the rectangle tool, choose the ellipse tool, click once. We're going to go with 150 pixels by 150 pixels for our ellipse. Grab our selection tool once more, and we'll grab this guy and just set it over here, kind of something like that. Maybe nudge it with the arrows, just bump it, kind of like that, so it looks like it sort of covers the end of the plunger. That looks pretty cool. We'll also now go back to the rectangle tool. We're gonna to create another rectangle. This one's gonna be very narrow. In fact, it's gonna be 25 pixels narrow because that's the size of our stroke. And the height is going to be pretty substantial. Maybe let's try 400 here for height. 
And you can see here, I'm gonna have an issue because right now it's giving me the stroke. Now, I, I actually just wanna use this shape as a filled shape. So once more, I'll come back here and I'll just use the swappy swap arrow to say, hey, look, get rid of the stroke and give me that color as a fill. You can see now it's just a piece of path. And I'm gonna align this, try to get it exactly lined up with my stroke there. So now I've got sort of the leverage point where the fingers would pull against when you're depressing uh, the plunger. And we'll create another filled rectangle with the rectangle tool now that we have our fill set over here. And this one is going to be 300 pixels wide and only 25 pixels tall. Hit OK. And this is going to be for the needle. So I can take this guy, align it here with kind of the center of what's going on something like that, and the needle will be sticking out from the plunger. So we have the sort of base rough shape of our syringe. And it'll be at this point that you're, you're really gonna wanna take a look at the syringe and say, are, are all the proportions exactly as I want them to be? Like I might look at this and say, you know what? I really want there to be more length to the syringe. So I could select this, this you know initial shape we created, and I could just grab the anchor point and just pull it, make everything a little bit longer, and then just select the needle and the little you know end of the needle or whatever, whatever the, the piece that's gonna join the needle to the body of the syringe, and just nudge that stuff over. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. We're gonna, we're gonna clip this thing off here in just a second. Uh, and then over here, maybe the base of the syringe, maybe we want this, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, maybe we want the syringe to be depressed a little bit further, like maybe they've, they've really started pushing the syringe in uh, to get some of the juice out of the syringe, so, or pu pushing the plunger into the syringe, I should say. So maybe we want to extend that to there. So that's cool. What we need to do is create the sort of the flat piece that would go at the end of the plunger. So let's do that. Grab the rectangle tool, click a single time, uh, and we're going to go with a piece that's 25 pixels wide because we want it to be the same width as our strokes. And it only needs to be about 190 pixels tall. That'll cover the width of what we got going on. Once more, we're applying a stroke. So we just use the swappy swap arrow to make that a fill. Grab the selection arrow and drag this guy over into place and place it anywhere just kind of something like that. That'll look good. Maybe I'll nudge it over to try to make it a little bit more exact, but it really doesn't have to be perfect. We can see that looks pretty good. And we also need to go and create the needle point. So this, we're gonna grab the zoom tool here. I just select that and zoom way in on the needle point. This is actually pretty simple. And we grab the direct selection tool, the white arrow and select it. You can go with either the top or the bottom. I'm gonna go with the bottom anchor point. You can see I have it selected. Hold down shift and just nudge the right arrow key as many times as you want to make it as you know pointy or maybe not pointy as you like. So there we go. We just nudge it back a few times. We have a nice point on our syringe. So we have the base of our shapes created now. Now, probably the easiest way to just shorten up the, the base of the needle here is to just grab that shape, zoom in on it a little bit, and we can just, you know, press it in and try to get it, you know, moved over into place a little bit more as it should be. Maybe just nudge it one or two pixels to just clean things up a little bit. We can move the needle over a little bit more as well just to clean that up. We could use the shaper tool and wipe it out, but I think just to keep things nice and simple and easy, just to resize it like that is really, really simple. Now we're gonna be converting these strokes to a fill in a moment so we can just change all of the color very, very easily, but I think it's time to put some juice in the syringe. So grab the rectangle tool, click once, and let's go with, uh, let's try like 425 pixels wide and we'll go with like 175 pixels tall. We might need to adjust this, uh, but let's just see what we've got here because this is sort of the fill of the needle. So you can see I actually do need to stretch it out, make it a little bit bigger here, that's fine. And we wanna move this to the back, but before we do, I'm gonna, let's give it like a reddish color. So I'm gonna go with, uh, FF002B should be a pretty good, yeah, pretty rich red. Hit OK. That looks good. Now, this obviously needs to be behind uh, all of our, our borders here on our syringe. So let's go Object, Arrange, and we've got this Send Backward Hotkey, Command or Control, and the left bracket key. So I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to keep doing it until it disappears behind all of my bits of stroke. And you can see there, it just looks like a perfect fill now. So now that we've done that, let's once more grab the rectangle tool. We'll click once. I want to do a 25 pixel wide rectangle uh, with a height of, I don't know, let's go maybe 75 pixels. Let's hit OK. That's probably good. Let's zoom in here. And I want to set the fill here to the same color as my stroke. So if I double click on the fill over here, the stroke was 26, 26, 26. A very, very dark gray. Hit OK. We'll drag this guy over into place. These will be sort of our measurement marks, if you will. Hold down the Alter Option key and just drag a copy of this out. This is where it's nice to have smart uh, guides turned on because it'll help keep you exactly level. All right, I'm gonna drag out another piece and another piece. Don't worry about making sure they're all uh, you know, spaced out perfectly. We'll take care of that in a moment. All right, now I'm gonna select every other one of these. So I'll select the first one, hold down shift, select the sec, or the, 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 I selected the second one, then hold down shift, select the fourth, and then hold down shift, select the sixth. And we'll just grab this top anchor point here and just size these down to make them a bit shorter. All right, so we have our measurement pieces. Let's hold down shift now and select every one of them, just like that. And now what we can do is we have the selection tool active. Up here in our top toolbar, we have some alignment features, 
but we also have some spacing features. Now, what I want to make sure is that I have this set to align to selection in this case, not align to artboard. And we want to go ahead here and choose this middle one, horizontal, distribute, center, and you can see it's going to line everything up just perfectly. And if I, if I think they need to all be a little bit bigger, I could just drag them up a little bit. Maybe I could even nudge them up just like that, and I get some nice measurement marks there on my syringe. And I think we should add a highlight here across the top of the syringe, like from here to over here. So let's grab our rectangle tool, and once more, we'll go like uh, maybe like 450 on the width and 25 on the height. Hit OK. Let's see if this is too long or maybe not quite long enough. It's just not quite long enough. So let's drag this over. And we're just going to fill this with white. So double click over here on the fill. Let's fill it with white. And obviously, this should probably go beneath the, the uh, stroke on the side. So let's use that command left bracket or control left bracket if you're on the PC and just nudge it until it's hidden behind our strokes but is still above the red. So you can see there we have just a nice highlight going across the top of our syringe. And I think one last thing, just to help simplify it, let's just get rid of part of the plunger here. I know the plunger is still going to be out here, but I think it'll just kind of clean up the effect a little bit, um, and, and we'll see what, what we think about it when we do it. So select the stem of the plunger right there. We just selected that one shape. Come over here to the transparency panel. Select that. Double click on this little you know circle with the slash to activate a mask. Uh, uncheck clip. We don't need to have clip selected. Grab the rectangle tool, and we're going to here hit the swappy swap arrows to set fill at, or set the stroke as the fill. Double click on that, and let's make sure our fill is 100% black, just zero 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 zero. Hit OK, and let's just draw out a uh, a rectangle about this big. So it's like that area of the of the stem there we are hiding, the area that's covered in black on this stem piece is being hidden. And you can see that reflected out here in the artwork. Great. Let's uh, select this piece of artwork in the transparency panel to get back to our full editing uh, mode. And if I deselect, yeah, I think I kind of like that. I think we'll roll with that. And that'll be our basic syringe. But now what we need to do is we need to make sure these are all fills. Remember, these uh, rectangles are all just, they have strokes on them, right? It's a stroke, not a fill. So let's select everything here. And let's group this up by going object group. And I want to copy this group because we want to create sort of this white outline, right? This is, this is why it's going to be important to convert our strokes to a fill, at least for the outline. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll zoom in here. We will copy this artwork. And in fact, if I look here over in the, um, over in the artwork layer, I'll see that I just have that single group that we just created, which is all these layers mashed into one group. We can duplicate this layer, object, or I'm sorry, edit, copy. And we'll go edit. In this case, we'll paste it in back because we want our stroke to be coming out of the back. And I can even rename this group stroke. And with this group selected, you can see that the group selected because it's got the red active box next to it and not our artwork in the front. In fact, we can even shut that off if we want. Uh, we'll select that and we will go object expand appearance and let's go ahead and hop over to the Pathfinder panel, which is Window Pathfinder right there. I actually have it open over here. And what I want to do here is I want to choose to merge this all to a new shape. So I'm going to hit the Merge option here, and you can see it's basically one big shape. I'm going to, I want to fill it with one uniform color, though. So let's just maybe fill it with white right off the bat. And let's try hitting that Merge option again. Now you can see we just have one big white shape. There we go. And let's set a, a white stroke on this. So we can select the stroke. In fact, maybe it's easiest if we just go back to the stroke. I'm going to collapse my Pathfinder real quick. Go back to the stroke panel. And let's give this like a 20-point stroke. And now you can see it's, it's overlapping a little bit of the needle and stuff. That's because the stroke is straddling the path. We want to set it to the outside of the path, just like that. And we want to make sure that our stroke is white as well. So we'll just go with a white stroke. And I think it would be cool to throw a drop shadow underneath this shape. So we'll go Effect. A stylized drop shadow. I'm going to keep preview shut off because I think I kind of know what I want. I'm going to go, I, mean, I can leave the mode at either normal or multiply will work. We'll go with a 20% opacity. Whoops, make sure we not go 700, 20% opacity, not 75, 20. Uh, we'll go with an X offset of zero and a Y offset of something healthy, maybe seven, seven to 10 will probably be fine. Uh, and then a blur, something pretty small, maybe like two. So let's tick on preview, see what this looks like. And you can see we have a little bit of a shadow, maybe a Y offset of more like four would be better. There we go, something like that, very subtle. And maybe even reduce the opacity a little bit more, take it down to like 10. We can hit okay, great. And uh, then turn on our top piece of artwork again, and you can see we have uh, the base of the syringe. Now, to create the drop of blood that's coming out of the end of the needle, it's actually pretty simple as well. We'll go ahead and grab the ellipse tool here, and I'm gonna get rid of the stroke. So we do have a stroke on it. We're gonna be bringing a stroke to it in a moment, but just to keep things simple here, I'm just gonna work with a base shape. And let's create like a, I don't know, 40 pixel by 40 pixel ellipse, something you know small but not tiny. Let's go 
go 40 by 40, great. And I'm going to grab my uh, direct selection tool here. I'm gonna select the anchor point on the very top of this, and I'm just gonna nudge it straight up, like, I don't know, one, two, three, yeah, probably three is good. I held down shift and hit the up arrow key three times. Then here underneath the pen tool, so if we right click on the pen tool, we can choose the anchor point tool. We want that. And we simply click on that top anchor point once and it's gonna give us a sharp raindrop looking shape. Perfect. Now we need to uh, copy the fill of that red layer there. So we'll grab our eyedropper tool and I'll just try clicking directly on the red shape. There we go, we get the red blood. And now let's select our stroke over here in the bottom of the toolbar and come over here to stroke and we'll apply the same size stroke around this blood drip as the syringe has. So that's a 20 point stroke. We want to make sure that the stroke is aligned to the outside of the path, of course. There we go, something like that. And we'll go ahead and apply the same drop shadow. So let's just choose drop shadow and 10%, 0, 4, 2, all looks great. We can preview it, there it is, bada boom, hit OK. And I am going to grab my selection tool and I'll just nudge this with the arrow keys and just try to move it up so it's just running right off the base or the, the needle point of the syringe. You can make it as perfect or not perfect as you like. And I'll just zoom this in a little bit so we can get a good look at it, move my, my stuff out of the way. And yeah, looks pretty cool. So, you know, it's it's not a, a, a crazy in-depth tutorial, but it's a really cool little piece of artwork that you can go ahead and create. And if you do create it, try mixing up different color backgrounds and different color elixirs and liquids. I just went with kind of a standard blood red kind of color. Uh, but if you do create this, upload it to Instagram. I would love to see it. Tag me in your Instagram post post at tutvid, that's at T-U-T-V-I-D over on Instagram. I'll have a little bug, animated bug appear here on this video as well. And there's also a link for my Instagram down in the bio of this video as well. That makes it easy. Uh, yeah, so just tag me in the post. You don't need to give me some elaborate shout out, just like a tag, just so I can see it. And I'll give you a like, give you a comment and, and you know, hey, who knows what happens, right? It's Instagram, it's a lot of fun. So for creating this blood filled syringe medical apparatus device thing in Adobe Illustrator, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.